Hello everyone and welcome to the inaugural game of Batman Gotham City Chronicles by Monolith Games, a game I backed on Kickstarter in Season 2 but I got the all in for Season 1 as well. And we are here with the first scenario from the campaign book for Season 1 to sink a city. Bane and his hired goons are setting bombs in a subway station and you've got to try and stop them if you're playing as the heroes. Um, this is our first battle report although you've seen some of these or all of these painted minis in the painted update videos we've been doing. This is not a how to play, this is kind of just a, a learning as we go type thing. We might end up doing this scenario twice as a result. But we'll go over just the basics of how it works to hopefully ease in anyone who's utterly unfamiliar with the game. Make it understandable so that you know what's happening and can watch along and hopefully enjoy. Now I will say this isn't the idealist first map because it's very shiny, very reflective because it's very dark. It probably isn't getting picked up well enough on camera but the maps they have for this game are amazingly detailed. Even though they're 2D, it is very obvious where like rooms and such are and where there's lower sections and upper sections, which does matter for gameplay. So for the purposes of a subway map, the L kind of like inversed L shape, that's the top level, escalators, next level down, everything else, lowest level of the subway station. Simple as that. You can see everything is set up. Bane's there, there's a bunch of hired goons and also some heroes that we'll go over in a second. But the gist of how the board is laid out you can kind of see lines denoting a section, you can move between them. There's an interactive app you can get for free on the Monolith website for this game where if you click on a square on any given map it shows you exactly where line of sight can be drawn from. That is super helpful. I don't want to have to be pausing constantly to check my phone so I might sometimes assume a wrong line of sight but uh, that's again just to help with ease of watching so I don't have to keep on pausing. But for the most part if someone is on a raised section you can check the letter on the map, and if it matches a letter in the area you're trying to look at, it means the areas can see each other. That's the gist of it. Uh, what else? I guess we should go into mission specific stuff before we cover how heroes and villains play. The game itself is meant to be one person plays the villain, one to four people if you have season two can play heroes. Sometimes missions are only two people playing heroes, sometimes they're one. This initial one is three heroes. There is player made solo rules for kind of like an AI controlled villain. I've modified them slightly and we'll be using that here. Um, basically just make the villain randomize who they're activating but then just do what makes the most sense. So the gist of this mission is there's a bunch of bomb tokens. One, two, three, four, five. They're inactive. They can be primed by Bane or ooh, one certain type of thug. It's the, it's the dudes with the Uzis. So these type of guys, the ones that look like Willem Dafoe. They can prime the bombs, the bomb miniature gets put in its place. Uh, I believe it's an instant win for the villains if four or more bombs are active. The heroes instantly win if there's less than two left on the board, either primed or not. So basically if there's one or zero. Uh, let's see what else, there's also computers that the, I think the shotgun brutes? No, the guys with the green hats and cross uh, crowbars they can activate a bomb remotely by getting to a computer. Now the heroes have to defuse bombs, but if they get to a computer they can disable a computer. There's one computer there, one there, one all the way up there, and I think there's one more. Oh yeah, one there. They can disable them. They don't get any victory points or anything like that, or victory conditions. It just means that there's one less place for the, the villains to activate bombs remotely from. In terms of iconography on the map as well, there's a stun grenade sitting that the heroes can try and pick up. There's also a minigun that the heroes can pick up if they choose, although it adds to encumbrance. There's three heroes on the map. Red Hood has to start there. Rebirth Batman starts there. Rebirth Batman is a season two character, but he can be used in this mission as per an updated document that shows which season two characters can be used in season one missions. So he is. And then Catwoman is right at the back there. And these symbols, the kind of like green circles, those are reinforcement points where the villain player can make additional henchmen come in as they are taken out. The game goes until one of those conditions I mentioned is met or hero turns 7 and heroes go first in this scenario. So you can skip the next bit if you're not interested in some of the minutiae about the game but we're going to quickly go over how the heroes work and then how the villains work and then we'll get started. So here are our heroes and the hero boards, the Wayne Tech computers. There's Batman, there's Red Hood and there's Catwoman. So, the basics of a board, your stats, close combat attack, ranged attack, complex manipulation, 
always denoted by like the robot hand. Complex thought, that's like hacking, etc. Defense, rerolls, movement. This is your energy square, where you have the number denoted here in health essentially, but also what you use to spend on skills. So this Batman has 11, the other two have 10. And then depending on the scenario, you have to start with a certain number of cubes in your fatigue zone, which is the middle zone. For this mission it's 5, so Batman's got 6 there, 5 there. This last bit is for wounds, as if he takes damage. And you have a maximum number of cubes you can put in to each thing per turn. Like for instance, Batman can do 3 physical attacks per turn. That's what that means. Um, you can either be in an active or a resting position and that denotes how many cubes come back into your usable energy space when you start a turn. You don't want to waste all your energy at once because that means you're going to have to sit for like one or two turns doing nothing. You can defend and reroll when you're resting but that's all. You can't move, you can't attack, etc. The other thing to note, Bat Family characters have utility belts. For instance, Rebirth Batman has a utility belt with four spaces. That just means you can bring some free equipment in your utility belt. It doesn't count to your encumbrance because the more you're encumbered the less free movement you get. So he has taken Batarang so he has a ranged attack, a bat cape so he gets one automatic defense on defense rolls, and a armband computer which gives him the hacking level 1 skill. We come over to Red Hood, he automatically has to be equipped with a revolver as per the mission, and he has taken a grappling hook which gives him parkour 3 I think is the skill, that takes up all two spaces in his utility belt, simple as, and as per the scenario Catwoman just has claws and that's it. She's not very good at attacking. She only rolls yellow dice, but she's very, very good at disarming, so that's why she's here, essentially. These are the dice used for the game. White ones are the worst, yellow is the next up, orange, red, black. Although it's arguable if black is the best here, because red is consistent, I think it's only got one blank space on it. But the black one is kind of like all or nothing, there is a 50-50 chance at a success, but two of the three successes is four hits, which is pretty nasty. So that's basically how it is. You don't activate one character and go until you decide that you stop. You could do one thing as Red Hood, one thing as Batman, go to Catwoman, go back to Red Hood for two actions, you know. It, it's not limited. It, the only limitation is how much of your energy you're willing to spend going for your objectives. So, now let's cover how the villains work and we can finally get started. So this kind of neat looking thing is the command board for the villain player. Though so this up here is the turn marker. Again, heroes are starting this game so they're getting initiative on turn 1. But the way villain characters activate, they activate 2 tiles from the river per turn and the cost in energy cubes they spend depends on where it is. So for instance, if on the first villain turn they decide, oh we'll activate the elves with pistols. Boom, 3 energy cubes would go from here to here, it's spent. This card comes out, pushes the rest down and makes them cheaper and then you activate all the owls that are on that. They can either attack and move or they can move and attack and then they can also do a bonus move afterwards if the villain is willing to spend some extra cubes here. You can also spend cubes on defense or cubes on rerolls. And depending on the scenario that dictates how many he has here to start the game and how many he has in his fatigue zone as well. The warning thing does specific things depending on the scenario. Usually it's reinforcements and then reinforcements plus something else. In this initial scenario you can do reinforcements or you can do reinforcements and turn Bane into Venom Infused Bane where he gets a different card. He becomes stupider so it's harder for him to do the objectives but he hits like a truck. So it's and he's miniature changes as well. So it's it's up to the villain when that wants to happen and that number here denotes how many cubes come back to him when his turn starts. The hero player does some stuff with their cubes that we'll cover when we actually play at the start and end of their turns. The villain only does it at the start of their turn which does matter. The minutia of which you will have to trust me for. The rulebook for the game, which is right here, pretty thick, it is one of the worst rulebooks I've ever seen. It's poorly written, poorly laid out, it makes no effort to gently introduce a new player to how to the game is played. It's a very good reference for every little thing you want to know about any given section because it's endless flowcharts, like endless, endless flowcharts but it is appalling at teaching you this game and it makes the game seem so much more difficult than it actually is. There's wonderful how to play videos available though that are officially recommended by Monolith so look online for how to play. I've only covered the basics to hopefully help you understand what's happening. We're now going to jump in to Tsinka to City with the heroes going first. So let's get things started officially and again apologies that this first map being used is so dark because it makes the reflective light on the cardboard 
worse. Um, but we shall persist. It goes into hero turn one, which I guess should mean we turn it to the hero side, so we're on hero turn one. And again, you don't need to do everyone's entire turn first, so I think we're going to go with Red Hood first. Red Hood is here, right down in the subway, and I think he's going to shoot this thug here because the heroes probably want to kill the guys with the crowbars and the guys with the Uzis because they're the guys who can prime bombs, besides Bane. And Bane's expensive to activate, so it's not likely he's going to be activating first turn. So Red Hood, he's good at shooting, so what he's going to do is, from where he is, he's going to shoot the thug in the square next to him. Now, we'll worry about intricacies of what if there's villains on the same square as you and you're trying to shoot out of it etc there are rules for that but it doesn't apply here so let's see red hood oh sorry the first thing is everybody's going to be in their active stance meaning they can do stuff which means two energy from their fatigue zones go into their spendable energy because they're actually going to be doing things this turn so red hood is going to spend one out of a possible max of three on a ranged attack which means he gets one red dice plus an additional re-rollable red dice from the pistol he is using. And he is doing that against the thug. I'm going to have to roll these separately because only one of them is re-rollable, so let's just roll that. That's two, and that's two. Now, these thugs with the crowbar, if we come round here, they have one automatic defense, which is denoted at the top right, and they have one HP. So, that means there's three damage coming in after you take off as one automatic defense. The villain player can spend energy if he wants to get an orange dice to re-roll, or to roll rather, to try and defend, but against three damage, the best you can get on an orange die is two, so it's probably not worth it. So that thug is dead, and he's gone. So that is an example. Now the first time you move with a hero, you get their bonus move bonus. <laughs> I said bonus twice there. For Red Hood, that's two. It's two for all of them as long as they're not encumbered but it only applies to your first move. So what you could do is use that free movement bonus to maybe go like one, two and stand here, but then the thugs in here could see him. So what might be better is if he just moves one to here, into this square here. Well, I say square. <laughs> that most certainly is not a square. And he's going to take another shot at this shotgun guy just straight down the hall next to the flare there. Now the shotgun guys, if I take a look over here, I think they're a bit tougher. Yeah, they've got two defense. So I think what he'll do is he'll use two more energy cubes, bring into his max. So that is two plus the one bonus from his gun. And the one bonus gets re-rolled. And we'll see what we can do. So that's looking good. So that is five coming in, minus two. That's three coming in. He is basically just done. Now remember, the, it's pretty easy to replenish henchmen, so even though they're killing, that's not really the point. Now, does Jason want to do anything else? He's got four energy left, he can't do any more ranged attacks. His melee is okay, but not amazing. But we'll leave him for now. I think we'll leave him for now. Now, Batman is awkward, because he's all the way up here. And what's he going to do? Uh, he's probably going to back up Catwoman, I think, because Catwoman isn't great at fighting. And there's two, well, there's two bombs up the top of the map and two bombs down the bottom. And then one right in the middle with Bane. So let's have Batman do his free move. He's got a free move of two, but he'll just move one. Or will he? Because he could drop down. Hmm. Well, hang on. If he wanted to move here, that would be one, two, but it's also a drop of two. So it would be one, two, three, four five total movement if you wanted to move into the square with the guy to punch him instead. Five movement needed. Let's count this up. Five. However, he's got three movement of two, so it means three movement cubes. He also has the parkour skill of one, which means he can ignore one. So he's actually only having to spend two energy cubes to get over there for five movement on his first action, if I've done that correctly, which again, may not be entirely accurate. But, he's going to spend two on his movement. You can spend up to four. So again, one, two, three, four, five, but minus one from his two free movement bonus and minus one from parkour skill level one. Put him right into that thug's face. Now, he can do three physical attacks max, and he rolls red dice, plus he has the martial arts skill, which means as long as he gets at least one success, he can do another, you get a bonus plus one, basically. Let's punch this guy. Let's try and let's, let's guarantee it. Well, I say guarantee. We'll use two, two fists. 
Ooh, so you do get two with martial arts, that becomes three. And these are the henchmen that have one automatic defense. So basically two damage is coming in. So that is defendable. So I guess we'll see, because it's probably in his best interest, that the villain will spend one cube on defense. And see, he needs a two. He got a one. Now he could, if he wanted to invest even more, spend a cube on a reroll to reroll that orange die. But that does not seem worth it. So that thug is gone. Does Batman want to do anything else for now? He does. That square can see there, so he's going to throw a batarang at the back of that thug's head. Those thugs are pretty tough. They've got two automatic defense as well. They still only have one HP, but this Batman isn't built for ranged attacks much. He doesn't have a lot of energy cubes left either. Let's say then we'll put, we'll leave him with two, and we'll put two into ranged. So that's two orange plus a re-rollable yellow from the bat ranks he's equipped with against the thug the re-rollable yellow so that is six against his automatic defenses of two so he has four coming in he isn't blocking that so he is also done but batman did use a lot of energy there so now it's just catwoman i'm not sure what catwoman wants to do because her attacks are yellow re-rollables they're not great uh give me a second to think about what she wants to do Okay, a plan has been hatched. Catwoman is going to play it safe because she isn't built for combat. She does, however, have good movement. Her movement bonus is 3. You can see that here. She's not encumbered. She also has parkour level 3 as well. So she's probably going to do is a 1, 2, 3, 4 to drop down there, but it would also be added up to 6 because that's a 2 drop there. But she ignores the 2 drop because she has parkour level 3. So really, she's just spending the 1 to move from there to there as I understand it because that would be one two three four five six but again she ignores the parkour she has a movement bonus of three so she'll spend one on movement by putting that there she has no ranged attack because she's not equipped with a ranged weapon she does have a thing she rolls for it but again because she isn't equipped with a ranged weapon no can do if she went and picked up the minigun she could use the minigun but that would slow her down and she's needed for disarming I think she might just stay where she is and she'll kind of go nuts on this room next turn. She has Batman guarding her, which is pretty good. Is there anything else she could do? I'm not comfortable sending her in by herself, so I think I think that's the end of the first hero turn. Yeah. I don't think Red Hood wants to do anything else. He's going to go nuts in here next turn. Yeah, okay. So at the end of a hero turn, all the energy you spent goes into your fatigue zone which is the middle zone, like so, and Catwoman just spent one, and that's where you draw from when you next roll around. So now it moves into the villain's turn one, so again we should probably switch this to the villain's side, because we're on villain's side turn one, and they have to decide, based on the number of cubes they have to spend, what in the river they want to activate for the price lift listed above, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're probably not going to be activating Bane, let's put it that way. Uh, also, at the start of their turn, they would regenerate. Oh, that's, that cube stays there, actually, because it's only at the end of their turn they move. However, five go from here to here, so they would get those two into there. So, now the thugs, or sorry, now the villain needs to decide if it's thugs, brutes, owls, or bane that gets to activate. They can activate up to two tiles. They don't have to activate two tiles. They could just do one expensive one and say, done. But that's going to be decided at random. So I said random, sorry, I should have meant said semi-random, again based on the solo mode play that somebody else made, kind of just to save printing off a bunch of AI cards similar to Wasteland Warfare, did a bunch of ranges, rolled for a range, in that range, whatever seems like the smartest thing for a player to do would be the choice made. It just seems simpler to me to do it that way, so that's how we're doing it. So with that said, bog standard thugs are going first because they want to arm a bomb. So what happens is you spend their cost, they're in the one slot, Boom, one spent, all the thugs activate. This card gets moved to the end of the river, everything else moves down. I love how neat this is. We're gonna hold this card though, just so we can cover how this works. These thugs, they have a movement of two. If they get to a bomb, they can arm it. If they get a complex manipulation of three, and for that, they're rolling an orange die and a white die uh, with no rerolls. So that's what they're gonna try and do. And all the thugs activate. So all the Willem Dafoe looking guys with the Uzis, they're all activating. So there's one there, one there, uh, where's the other two? They didn't die. One there, and one there. So they could get away with a bunch of stuff here. 
and they, they can't do anything with bombs though. So this one here is going to move just one to get to that bomb, and he's going to try and arm it because that's what he would do. They're they're there to arm bombs. So on a white die and an orange die, he needs three. Nope. Um, if he'd gotten say like that, he could pay for a reroll to try and make it happen, but he didn't, so that's not worth it. His turn is over. This guy is going to move and try and do the exact same thing because hired goons need a little help now and then. Now then, would that warrant a reroll? How many chances? There's two chances out of six to get the double he would need. Yeah, I think the villain would. So let's say a villain point is spent on a reroll, four maximum allowed in the turn. To go for it. Got it. So that bomb token is gone. Put that to one side. And a bomb mini. Picked up two by accident, is now here because that bomb is armed. So the heroes will need to make a move on it. So, this Willem Dafoe looking gentleman will also try and arm that bomb, and he succeeded by getting the complex three he required. So now there's an arm bomb in there in the top right as well. And then this guy here, I guess he could technically move afterwards as well, couldn't he? Um, you know what, he'll move out here so he's backing up his gun friend. And the one over there will also try and arm that bomb. Is it worth it again? It probably is. Second of four possible rerolls spent. Didn't get it. So that was his effort. He could move, but he's going to stay in that room because that room is full of people armed. So that is all their first action. So again, you take this. They could technically attack, but they were going for bombs. They managed to prime two of them, which is pretty good. This now becomes the most expensive card on the river and everyone has moved down so now again could if they want to trigger a second tile let's see if they are. So the next tile going to be activated by, by the villains rather is the owls with the dual handguns but first just a, a thing about victory conditions just double check um, the game ends early if the heroes neutralize four bombs that's the only time the game would end early otherwise it does end at the end of hero turn seven so villains don't get a, a, a turn seven but the villains only win when you check the end game condition if two or more miniatures are still on the board at the end of the game so there is they still have to prime them because otherwise it would be a draw so there is a reason to still to do it even though you know the heroes could still technically lose even if they've not been primed so anyway the L's cost two, boom, two spent, that card comes out, the river goes down, and we look at these gentlemen, so they only have a ranged attack, they have the bodyguard skill, and they have the, I can't remember what the skill is called, but that basically means they get one automatic success as long as they get one hit, it's the martial arts equivalent for ranged attacks, I, I have forgotten offhand what it's called, sorry, they have two armor, one health, two movement, etc, the other symbols incidentally are height and menace, menace matters if you're trying to pass through a square with enemies in it, or try and do a manipulation with enemies in it and they make them harder but they can be countered by a hero so again we'll keep this tile there so the elves are going to move up to two this one is going to move one this one is going to move one because then they both have line of sight at red hood so they're both going to shoot but let's just cover the movement first he's going to move out because he's going to shoot at batman and this one over here i think is just going to stay where he is because he's guarding a bomb so why not so let's cover one of these guys shooting red hood but look at this they get a yellow and an orange die, rolling for ranged attack, no re-rolls. So first attack against Red Hood, it does one damage. So the way defense works, you can defend by spending up to your maximum, and that shows you what you get, so up to four orange dice for defense Red Hood can give himself, but he does also have an automatic yellow defense as well. So is he just going to take the chance on the yellow dice? Yes, he is. So his, bo his extra bonus die. He blocked the one damage, so the first shot does nothing. The other L shooting am. Oh wait, no, his one automatic success that we just talked about. So actually that wasn't enough. So he took one damage. The other one. Missed. Fair enough. So the one shooting at Batman and then the adjacent square. He got two. So Batman gets an automatic re-rollable orange as defense, plus he has a the back cape for one success as well. He'll try it. He's only blocking, well he's blocking three isn't he because of the... he's gonna have to rest next turn. Hmm. He is gonna have to rest. You know he's got the back cape, he's just gonna try it. 
He blocked 2 plus 1 for the back cape, which blocks the 3 damage he would have taken, so the, the owl did nothing. And then the other one didn't move. So that is it. That's that's it for the villain turn. So at the end of the villain's turn... Oh, sorry. Also, this goes back in, but it's now the most expensive card in the river. All the energy spent goes into their fatigue zone. And then when it rolls around to their turn again, the 5... Although, there's... Yeah. 5 of those 6 get put into his pool. So right now he only has 5 with which to do defence or anything else he wants on hero turn 2, which is what we're moving into now. And on hero turn 2, you have to decide again, is your hero active or resting? And Batman, unfortunately, is going to have to flip to the moon side and say, ooh, I'm tired, I'm resting, but that does mean he gets 6 energy back to play with in the future. Red Hood is going to stay active, so he gets 2 energy. He has six to play with, and Catwoman stays active, and she has a bunch to play with. So now I'm going to need to take a second to decide what we're going to do. So this is going to be Catwoman's big turn. She's got three basic movement, so she's going to go one, two, three to get into that room with those two thugs. However, normally, one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three, but also four because you're leaving a square with an enemy in it who has a menace index of one, and you add that on. However, she has the, I think it's called Elusive skill so she can ignore up to two menace when she's passing through because she's very evasive so she can just walk through into there with her free movement bonus so she has to take out those thugs so that she can peacefully hack that un i was gonna say undiffused uh, unprimed bomb now she gets re-rollable yellows and also her claws give her an unre-rollable yellow as a bonus so i think she's going to do three and two to take out those henchmen because one of them uh, yeah, one of them, the one with the shotgun, has two armor. So let's see, three energy cubes spent on attack. So that's three re-rollables and one not re-rollable yellow die against this thug with two armor. He needs to go down. These are re-rollable. Didn't help. That's okay. And then this one is not re-rollable. Nice. Accidentally moved the console, but that's okay. So she's done five. He ignores two automatically. That's three coming in when he's got one health. An orange die would not save him, so he is done. So our next move, she's not going to have enough left to get rid of the bomb this turn, but she she wants to take this guy out. Well, actually, maybe she will. Okay, let's say two more. That takes her to our attack limit for the turn. So that's two re-rollables plus one that's not of yellow dice. So these are the re-rollables. Three so far, and this guy only has one armor. So one basic armor that is defendable. And I think it's probably, well, is it in the best interest of the villain, though? Because he's not got that many cubes. I think it still would. It matters, because she's going to try and pick that bomb. So he needs to get a two here. He did. Okay, woman failed. It was worth the spend. So she has three energy left to play with, but she can't do any more attacks, because she's at her attack limit. So she's just going to save that for defense. There's nothing else she can do. Batman is resting, he can only defend and re-roll, so there's nothing he can do. Red Hood, he's got 6 energy to play with. He's got 2 free movement, and he wants to go for that bomb. He's not great at defusing, honestly, but he's got to do something. So he's going to move his free move, 1, 2, into this room. Now he has a skill, I can't remember what it's called, but he can ignore up to 2 menace in his square if he's firing at someone further away. Normally you would get penalised for trying to shoot someone further away if there's someone has uh, hassling you right next to you. Uh, he's right next to a shotgun thug. He's going to kill the shotgun thug. Wait, is that the last guy? Because special things happen if you take out all of one type of thug, but no, there's one more. So let's say two. So that's two red dice plus one re-rollable red die from the bonus from his revolver, so we have to roll one separately. It's good so far. That is five, minus two for his automatic defence. That's three, he's gone. So, he's also going to spend another one on a final range attack, which is going to shoot at those big thugs. They have two armor. Yeah, they do. He's going to try and take him out. He's going to go for it. So one of these dice is re-rollable. So let's say this is the re-rollable one. He will re-roll it. He'll take the risk. Okay, and this is not re-rollable. Nice! So that's 5 minus the automatic defense of 2. That is 3 damage. He is done. But there is still more of them on the board. 
So he's got three energy left, but he can't shoot his gun anymore. I think he's just gonna he's just gonna say that's good enough for this turn. And keep going next turn. Yeah, I think that's it. So that is the end of Hero Turn 2. It goes over to Villain, but first of all, we have to any spent cubes go into the fatigue zone, like so. Which is a lot for Catwoman. There we are. And now the villain has to decide what they're going to do about this. So as we go into the villain's turn two, already notice a small mistake. Apologies. Catwoman also has the martial artist skill, which is if she gets at least one success in a melee attack, that's plus one bonus to the total number of hits you've said to have done. Totally forgot. It would have made a difference. She would have had like maybe one or two energy left. Too late to go back now. So anyway, at the start of the villain turn, energy to here. Five energy gets put back into the energy the villain can play with. And the first tile being activated is the warning tile. So this can do one of two things, as previously discussed, but what's it doing here, or what it is doing here, is providing five reinforcement points. And reinforced minis appear at any of the four, well, there's not always four reinforcement points, but there's one, two, three, four in this map. So, you reinforce based on the points in the bottom right corner of these cards, and the reinforcements are going to be two shotgun brutes, and one crowbar man for two two and one that's five points and as for where they're going i guess you're just going to decide what the best bet would be so he is going here he's going to come out the tunnel here because if he can just go in here he can try and activate a bomb via that terminal the shotgun guys one is going to go here to give extra defense to the bombs that red hood is going for and the last guy the last guy where does he go hmm Honestly, the best bet is probably... Well, actually, he could hassle Batman, maybe. But honestly, the smartest thing would probably be there to again put pressure on Red Hood, because it seems to make the most sense. I think so. I think that's what we're going to do. As for the next tile to activate, it would be... What would it be? It would be the Brutes, maybe? Yeah, let's say it's the Brutes. Oh. How much did the, the warning cost two? The warning was in slot number two. So then three gets spent on the brutes. It's becoming cheaper and cheaper for Bane, although we'll hold this over here again because we need this as a reference. So the brutes, including the reinforced ones, get to come back now. So he is going to move there. He is going to move there. And then this one is going to move out of here and shoot at Batman. And that's it. So those two are going to shoot at Red Hood. They get one unrerollable blank die, so there is a potential for damage coming in here. First shotgun brute on Red Hood. Does the four damage. Okay, okay. Red Hood is going to put one into defense. One enough. That would be what? No, sorry, wrong bit. That was rerolls. That would be an orange plus a yellow. Yeah, he'll risk it. Orange and yellow for defense. He blocked two. He took two damage. The next brute that's shooting at him, missed, no reroll. And then the one that's shooting at Batman, also missed. So that was a quick turn because of it being used as a reinforcement cost, but it does also mean that Bane will probably be activating next turn. So anyway, we do move on now to hero turn three. And again, remember, the villains don't refund their cost yet, so they've only got four to defend with currently. And as far as resting or not, oh, sorry, also the brutes have to go in the end of the river there. Batman is going to be active. So he gets two back. Oh, also, oh, you don't move out of the wound zone, but everything else should be in the fatigue zone. Red Hood is going to... He's getting swarmed. He needs to go active. So he's only getting two energy, he's got four to play with. And Catwoman is also going to stay active and take two. And then we have to decide what on earth is going to happen. So Batman is going to get the heroes started and he is going to throw a Batarang. He's going to put two into range attack, so that's two orange plus a rerollable yellow. And he's going to throw at the Court of Owls gentleman there. So that's not so great, but the yellow is rerollable. That's good. He's got two automatic defense, but that does mean that is saveable. However, this is where the energy management comes into play for the villain as well. That's not a lot of energy to play with. He's getting five back eventually. Oh, that should really be there at the end of his turn. He's getting five of those back when his turn rolls around. But that means he's going to be stuck activating only cheap tiles again. Uh, so this is where 
you you basically just like roll a d6, but let's say he takes it and he goes. So that is Batman's first action, or first thing he's doing. Then he's going to do his first movement action. He has two free moves, so he's just going to go one, two into this room with Catwoman, and he's going to punch Willem Dafoe. Now, they've only got one automatic defense. Let's do two red just to try and guarantee it. Two uh, energy spent on that. Remember he has martial arts, so it's not two, it counts as three. He has one automatic defense, so it's back down to two. Um, again, that is defendable, but I don't think the energy can be spared. So he is gone. So Batman's already burned through four of his energy. He's still got quite a bit left. Is there anything else he could do? He could attempt to defuse the bomb if Catwoman fails. So let's go over to Catwoman. To defuse a bomb, you need to do a complex manipulation of 6. So it's twice as hard as arming it. She has the demolitionist skill, or, or munitions expert, so it's called, which means one automatic success. So let's see, what should she do? She needs to get 6. She needs to make this happen. Let's throw in 3. 3 red dice. She needs 6, and she gets one automatic defense. S was success, so she didn't need it. She got it. That bomb is gone. So let's put this on her tile, and that's some of the way towards the heroes winning. They need to successfully remove two more either unarmed or armed bombs. Is she going to do anything else though? I don't think she can. I think she needs to rest next turn as well. Yeah, I think so. So that's all she's going to do. Well, she hasn't used her free movement actually. She might as well use her free movement. Why not? So let's move her, she gets three. Batman's going to work his way through those goons, I think, but she can't really help right now. Maybe she should go help Red Hood. Hmm. Let's go one, two, three. She'll start heading towards Red Hood. Oh, that's dangerous terrain, so that would count as two. I didn't notice that before. That's what that little traffic cone means. I didn't realize yet all the track is dangerous terrain. My bad. So actually, she wouldn't get that far because she doesn't have enough movement. Or she could spend one more cube. No, she'll stay hidden there. That's, that's good blockage there, I think. So, Red Hood. Willem Dafoe's only have one armor each. So he's going to shoot the first one with one. And again, he gets a re-rollable red dice thanks to his revolver. So the, I, I did denote this one as the re-rollable. So that is two, one... Again, needs the needs the energy to be spent elsewhere, and then he's going to spend another one to shoot again at the other Willem Dafoe. Again, we'll say the second dice is re-rollable. Stay consistent. He will try and re-roll it. And again, that's two damage coming through. So that Willem Dafoe is gone. There's one of them left on the board. But I don't think Red Hood can do anything else. He can use his free movement, he might as well, to move on to the bomb tile. He, he cannot attempt it. He's only rolling... He's rolling yellow dice for his complex manipulations. That's the best result in a yellow dice too, so not, two would not be enough, literally not enough. Batman's still got five energy to play with, but he's already had his free move. Hmm. What to do? Hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck, I'm thinking. He could spend one, walk out of the room, spend another one to try and knock out the crowbar thug, I guess, because he's only got one armor. Make use of the fact that the the villain doesn't have much energy cubes left to play with. Hmm. Well, at the very least, let's spend one to give him one movement to get him back out here. Make him a prime target, why not? Yeah, he's not going to throw at the shotgun brute because he's got two automatic defense. He'll throw at the crowbar guy at the back. That's him at his max, so that's an orange plus a re-rollable yellow. So, that's two overall. Takes him out. A lot of higher guns going down, but there's only been one bomb defused, which is not so good, especially if we're saying that's the end of turn three for the heroes already. They're basically about halfway through their time, so it's on to the villains. So, everything gets pulled into the fatigue. Except wounds. Over here. And yeah, let's see what the villains can do with their five energy that's getting drawn over from here to here. So that gives them pot to play with. Six, nine energy to play with. See what happens. 
Before we carry on, didn't Batman have one damage? I feel like at one point he did have one damage and Red Hood has two, and I just accidentally moved it during something. But So we'll put it there just in case, I can't remember for sure. Anyway, the first tile being activated this turn for the villains is the Crowbar Thugs for two. This goes in there, and there we go, and those pop along. And that's specifically so that they can do, they can move three incidentally. So this guy is moving in there, and then the only other Crowbar Thug is already there, but they need computers. So he's going to move there, so he's at the computer in there. You can have six people in this tile, that's what that number denotes. So he's going to try and activate a bomb via that computer, and he is doing the same. And they get a white re-rollable and a yellow to attempt the skill of three. So we'll do this guy first. White re-rollable. Nope. This guy. He succeeded. So I guess he gets to pick which bomb is primed now, because you're doing it remotely via the computer. So either the one next to Bane or the one down here as well. Say this one. I don't think it particularly matters. So now there's a, a primed bomb right in there. There's nothing else for them to do because they don't have any ranged attack. So that's the first tile activated. So the second activation for the villain again comes down to how much energy you're willing to spend. Because if six was to be spent, the shotgun brutes could activate and maybe Red Hood would get damaged and quite well, who knows? It's a 50-50 chance, essentially. Um, but that would use up all their energy. So instead, I'm going to stop Batman getting to the objective by spending just two to activate Bane. And he goes back to being expensive. He's only got movement of two, and he's in the subway car right now, so he's going to go one, two out here. And then, to move him up onto Batman Square, it would normally just be one extra movement. But it's going to have to be two, because of difficult terrain, and he does not have parkour. So he is on Batman Square, meaning, what is Bane's Menace Index? Bane's Menace Index is... oh, it's only one, I thought it was more. I guess it, maybe when he pumps up on Venom, that's when it goes up more. But either way, he's in the Dark Knight's face now, kind of throwing down with him. You can't challenge him this turn, because you can't do move additional move for cost and then an attack. You have to attack, move, move, attack, and then you can choose to spend for your second movement with a, a villain. So that is it for their turn. We are going to move into hero turn four and Catwoman is going to have to rest. So she's flipping to her rested side, which means she gets back five points. Three, four, five, but she can't do anything. Red Hood. That's a tough one. He could try and defuse that bomb or he could go gun happy and shoot the henchman. He's not going to rest. He's going to get just two back, giving him four energy to play with. That's a tough one. Batman is staying active as well, so he's going to get two energy to play with. And now we decide what on earth we're going to do. So even after me saying I didn't want to keep on stopping and starting, this game makes you stop and think as you get deeper in and you worry about, like when you start the game, you've got all this energy to play with, it's like, what could possibly go wrong? And then you start managing your energy, and it's like, oh, that's what can go wrong. So anyway, decisions have been made, as said, I think. So Batman is going to move, but he's only going to move one square. However, to leave his square, he has to pay an additional one because of the very nasty Bane in his square. So normally that would just be a one move, but it's a two, so that eats up all of his free movement. And he's going to throw a batarang at the thug in here. Now, orange lines on maps denote that you can see all of that tile from adjacent tiles. Meaning, say this L wanted to shoot in at this L, it looks like you can't see him because like, there's a wall of the subway train there, but because it's orange lines, it's denoting that, oh, you can see him through the windows. So that, that's what that means. Same with like there to there. Even though it kind of looks like you could hide around the corner, that's not how it works. So Batman is going to throw his batarang in. He's going to throw... these thugs have two, yeah, and they're very cheap to activate. Okay, he's going to do two, so that is two orange plus the re-rollable yellow from his batarang. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, we can do something about this. We are going to spend... oh, he needs to go down. Um, we are going to spend one on a re-roll, two on a re-roll... <laughs> That's tricky. We're going to spend... I think you can spend two rerolls at a time. He has a max of four. We're going to do that to reroll the two oranges. 
Okay, that's more like it. So that's two damage coming in. Does this matter enough to warrant spending? You know what? It probably does. He's going to try and defend it because this kind of matters. Let's see if he can block two. He did. He did. Well, that's unfortunate. How much energy has Batman got left to play with? Three. He does have parkour, so he ignores the dangerous terrain, I think, because parkour level one counters it. Um, what can you do? What can you do? You know what he can do, actually? He can go. He can tap himself completely. So, again, his parkour ignores the dangerous terrain level. Oh, sorry, difficult terrain, not dangerous. Dangerous is uh, a different thing entirely. So he's going to put one into movement, and he's going to walk into this square. And then he's going to spend his last energy cube on punch. <laughs> he uses punch. It's super effective. No, it is not. He failed, but hero menace indexes counter enemy uh, indexes. So that means, we'll just move her, him out of the way a little bit, because Catwoman is activating. With her free move, her evasive, um, and parkour rather, she's just going to go 1, 2. It would normally cost more, but again, her parkour counters it. So now this thug is occupied with Batman, he does not hinder her trying to pick this, or disarm this rather. So she's going all in on disarming this bomb, I think. So that is... I've already forgotten if it's manipulation or complex thought. Let me just check. Neutralizing a bomb, complex manipulation of six. So she gets red dice. Did I roll orange dice last time? Because if so, I did the wrong one. Uh, let's see... Let's say three. Let's go for it. She gets one automatic success. She needs six. That is five plus the one automatic success is six. She has disarmed that bomb. Let's just put another bomb token on her. She has disarmed two bombs. Very nice. Now, will she help out Batman? Um. Sure, why not? Let's let's give it a go. Two into physical, so that's two re-rollable yellows plus an unre-rollable. The unre-rollable. The re-rollables. Oof. Okay, he's got two automatic defense. That's three coming in. That is him taking it. Was that so hard, Batman? That's what he, she would taunt him with, honestly. Now, Red Hood is the last one to go. And what is he going to do? Oh, Catwoman was resting this turn. I just realised. She shouldn't have moved. Oh, no. She, would have had, she wouldn't have had enough energy to do all that. I totally forgot. Well, you know what? Let's say she didn't take that thug out. That refunds, what, three energy? I, I'm sorry, I, told, I just realised there, because I was like, hang on a minute, Red Hood's resting, isn't he? No, it was Catwoman. She was resting, she shouldn't have had enough energy to do all that. Uh, let's penalise her by saying she's got one wound as well. I, I don't want to go back, because I, I, I can't, she, because that would basically invalidate Batman's turn as well. Sorry, my bad. At least I caught it eventually, but yeah, that was dumb. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, Red Hood, he's just going to shoot twice, I think, at the shotgun brutes, because they are nasty. First one. The re-rollable will be the second dice rolled, again. That's four, two damage coming in. Kills one of them. The other shot, second one is the re-rollable. That's good enough if there's not any energy to spend. So he's gone as well. There's still one shotgun brute left on the table, so we don't have to see what neutralizing a tile means. Uh, but that was two shots, that gives him two energy left over. He wants to stay where he is. So... You know what, he's probably going to rest next turn. Let's do it. A third shot against the crowbar guy. Second dice is the re-rollable one. Sure, let's do it anyway. Six! Okay, you're gone. And that's... They still have one more on the board as well. So yeah, so, sorry for messing up Catwoman. I, I totally forgot she rested. I thought it was Red Hood. Wires got crossed. Uh, the energy equivalent probably did not work out. Because she would have only got two energy back. Not five. Refunded two, but that's still not good enough. S sorry, just a mistake. But with that, we go into villain turn four. And at the end of the hero phase, this goes into fatigue. This goes into fatigue. Batman is super, super tired. I think they all might be resting next turn. So let's hope that that's penance enough. Let's see what the villains do. So we're back over to the villain board. They get five energy. One, two, three, four, five. 
and they are activating the L's for three. I'm putting them down. Because the L's want to shoot at Jason Todd. So they're going to move into here so they can get line of sight of him. And then the other one might as well one, two, so you can sort of see. I'm, I might have to check the app actually. If you know that's orange line, so you can see and he can shoot. This is going to be an important turn for them. So let's do the two that are shooting at Jason Todd first. It's a uh, orange and yellow, no rerolls. First guy shooting at him. For one, Jason gets an automatic defense of yellow, so he's going to risk rolling that. He succeeds. The second L shooting at Jason does better. That's oh, I forgot again. They have automatic plus one success, so actually he took one damage from the first hit. So let's spend his last cube on defense, so he gets an orange and a yellow. He's defending against four damage, which is pretty nasty. And he only blocked one, so he took three. Jason, what are you doing? I actually think you're supposed to draw from these before you draw from that. No, 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 you draw from that first, then those. You do get health back, incidentally, so say he rests next turn and there's only three cubes there to bring back, he takes two from his wound zone, so that's kind of like how the heroes heal. That was nasty, so now this one is going to shoot at Catwoman, because Catwoman is the one who defuses bombs. She shoots at Catwoman for a total of three. Catwoman is not going to defend, and she doesn't get automatic defense. Uh, hmm. Actually, I don't remember what that skill there means. I'm not sure. She's just gonna, she's just gonna take the hit. I think. What was that? Three damage, though. Let's let's use one defense. Three damage comes down to one damage. All right, that's much much better. One damage. And that is it for the owls, because there's only three left on the board. So they're now at the end of the river. And back in here, slot them in. And then the other tile that the villains are activating this turn is warning for three to give them reinforcements points. Five of them. They're going to bring back a shotgun brute. They're going to bring back a three Willem Dafoe's. So that is, they're a single point each. So one, two, three, four, five. And let's see. Oh, chucking them away. They could all appear here and ruin Jason's day. You know what? Isn't that what would happen? Wouldn't they want to defend the bombs? That seems so silly, but it, I mean, it's got a size limit of 10. There's five in there. Or sorry, there's six in there rather, I can count. So yeah, I guess that's it. So that's it for the villain's turn. We go into the hero turn five. All that energy over there. <laughs> now the villain only has one cube, so he ain't defending against anything. Now, we do this right this time. Uh, let's see. Jason can't rest. He can't. He was gonna, but he can't. Because he's gonna get shot to bits. He's gotta start. He's gotta start taking shots. He's also very wounded though. No, Jason has to rest, he has to. It's, it might be a full rest. So, that goes down there. So he restores three, so two has to come out of his wounds. Batman, he's he's got nothing in the tank, so he has to rest. He gets back six, because Rebirth Batman is quite tough. And then Catwoman, she's gonna have to rest. She is. So that's three, four, five. So that should be in there. That wasn't much of a hero turn, but what can you do? They, they have to rest. So now it's going to be potentially very nasty as we go straight into villain turn five. They get five energy to play with, bring them to six total. And they have to think about how many guns are going to be shot at Red Hood, probably. So this skill here, it is benefits from that many. So in her case, one successes if attacked by range. So she should have had one additional defense, but let's just say that's further penalization for her taking a turn when she shouldn't have had one. So anyway, the villains activating the Willem Dafoe's for two. Bring that down. And they are all going to be shooting. They don't have great shoots. Oh, sorry, they should have moved first, though. They're moving. They're heading in after Red Hood. These ones here. And this one over here might as well. Actually, he can see from where he is, so why not just shoot? So these three are all shooting at Red Hood. They get, for the ranged attack, two re-rollable white dice. White dice are not great. They're swingy, but not as good as the black ones. First guy. Well, 
That's what I get for saying that. First guy gets two against Red Hood. He's going to... <laughs> He's going to defend for one, so that's an orange plus his automatic yellow. He blocked one. He took one. Uh, that's already his wound zone, so I guess he takes it from there immediately. Second guy shooting Red Hood. Hits him for two as well. He's just going to use his automatic defense and hope for the best. He blocked one, so he took one. Third and final guy. Oh no, four damage. Okay, Red Hood is going to put two into there because he needs to live. He only blocked two of it, so he takes two, so that immediately gets drawn in there. Oof, he is in a lot of trouble. Now the one will shoot at Catwoman. And hopefully whiff entirely. Nope, got for two, but she automatically defends against one. Uh, she'll take the one damage. Yeah, she'll take the one damage. So that is it for that tile. And now the enemy has, villain has four to play with. That shotgun brute could kill Red Hood. I don't actually know what happens if a hero gets neutralized, so we'll have to... I think we're going to learn that together, because those are going to activate for two. Brutes are activated. Oops, sorry. The thugs should be on the end of the line there. So, he's shooting at Red Hood. He's shooting at Catwoman. Let's see how this goes. They roll a black dice. Let's do the Red Hood one first. He missed. One against Catwoman. They missed. All or nothing, those black die. If they hit though, they hit really hard. So that is it. We're going into hero turn six, their second last turn, which also means in the next villain turn will be the last villain turn. Um, Catwoman is active for two energy. <laughs> Red Hood, you've got one turn left after this, man. So I suppose you've got to rest. At least it comes out of his wounds, so. He's not quite as dead, but yeah, he's resting. And Batman is active, for sure, because they need to do something this turn for two energy. All right, let's see how this goes. So this is it, this is the hero's scramble for getting out of here and defusing. Ideally, they win if both these bombs are defused. Simple as that, even if it's not the actual end point, that just automatically ends the game right there. Red Hood is, is not active, so he can't do anything this turn. So it's down to Batman and Catwoman. Catwoman can ignore the menace of the thug that's there, so she can just simply move one, two, three, and get in here with that bomb. But she's going to need some support, obviously. Uh, Batman does not have evasive or elusive or whatever it's called, so that thug is in his way. So he's got free movement. He would normally need to do one, two, three. It would actually become four because of the menace of the thug. He gets two for free, so he's going to spend two on move so that he can also follow Catwoman into this square here. And he's going to start punching. Now the elves also have two automatic defense. Yeah, everybody in there has two automatic defense. Awkward. Well, he's going to spend two to punch... I don't know, who's worse? The shotgun brute, I guess. Why not? Let's see what happens. You hit him for three when you take away the two automatic defense. Shotgun Brute is down. He is then going to spend rather one more to punch one of the owls. Need a three here to even do damage. Not going to spend on a reroll. Is there anything else he wants to do? All or nothing. Well, we could come to Catwoman and we can say Catwoman wants to beat up one of those owls. So she's going to spend three on three re-rollable yellow dice, plus one bonus for her claws. So these are the re-rollables. <laughs> Just as well. More like it, and this is not re-rollable. So that is two coming in. One could be spent. It's not gonna. So that L is gone. And now their menace index trumps his, because they both are asserting their dominance. So that means... The Batman is not hindered if he wants to throw a Batarang at one of the Willem Dafoe's, which he's going to. He's going to throw or spend two, and he gets a re-rollable yellow for the Batarang itself. 
So that is, they have one automatic defense. That's one damage coming in. One Willem to fall down. He's then going to spend his last enemy energy cube on a single ranged attack on another Willem to fall. The yellow is re-rollable. Neither two. Did nothing. So now, Catwoman is going to try and defuse that bomb in her tile. The enemy's menace index is countered by Batman's. She's going to do three red. She needs a six and she gets one automatic success added on. She got seven, so that's eight. That bomb is gone. So, I don't think there's anything else she can do. Red Hood is resting, Batman's got nothing left. That's it for their turn. So all of this goes into here for her. Red Hood stays as is. And we go over to what is the last turn for the villains, because they do not get a turn seven. So five energy comes in here, and they have to make big plays. So the villains are in a tough position because the best things to activate are also the most expensive up here. So what's going to happen is, the brutes are activating for one, but they're not doing anything because the only brutes are there and at the other end of the table they can't reach in. Well I guess he could technically move too, but he doesn't have a ranged attack, so that's just to get everything else cheaper. And then their best bet is probably just to go with the Willem Dafoe's for five. To shoot at Red Hood and Catwoman? Yeah, I think so. That's four, that's five. So they are activated. And this is the villain's last move. And they can move two squares. Because he can move there, and then he has line of sight into there. So that one is shooting at Catwoman. An orange and a white. For two damage, although it becomes one, because she automatically blocks one, she'll take the one damage. These two will shoot Red Hood. First one. Nope. Second one. One damage. He'll just use his automatic yellow defense. Which he doesn't make. So he loses one of his energy, although he's going to get that back on his next turn. And that's it. That's all the villain can do. So it goes straight into Hero Turn 7, which again is the final turn either way. And if they want to win, they have to defuse one more bomb. So they're all going active, regardless of context, or what they have left. So it's just two energy to each of them. Flip that to the we're doing things side. And that only gives Batman two energy to play with, huh? Okay, well, Batman is going to throw a Batarang for two orange and a yellow be rollable at one of the Willem Dafoe's. Well, actually, is there any point? Might as well, yes, yes, because it makes it easier for Catwoman to cross the square, yes. So the yellow is re-roll, but we won't re-roll. The Willem Dafoe's have one automatic defense. The last energy cube is being spent to try and block it. It didn't block it. One Willem Dafoe down. So, that's Batman done. He has no energy left. Red Hood is going to try a defuse. He can have up to six, two, four, six. He's going all in on yellows. So he needs two more yellows on top of this. So I'll just re-roll blanks. He's not going to get it. He didn't get it. What are you doing to me? Well, in that case, he'll shoot at the Willem Dafoe that's blocking the way for Catwoman. Second one is re-rollable. That is four. Took him out. And that means it's down to Catwoman. It actually does just come down to her. So for free, she can move right next to the square. She's just got to defuse that bomb. She's going all in. Four red dice. One automatic success. She needs six. She did it. There's six, seven, eight. That bomb is defused. She's defused four of them. We're at the end of the game either way, but let's take a look at the victory conditions. So if we take a look at the scenario here, we can take a look at the end game conditions. It's either at the end of Hero Turn 7, or if the heroes have neutralized four bombs. The two things happen simultaneously because of how much of a full finish that was. Victory conditions. Heroes, the heroes have prevented the building from collapsing if fewer than two bombs remain on the board. There is one bomb remaining on the board over there. As I push into some cardboard next to me. Villains, the heroes were not fast enough and they fail if two or more bomb miniatures are on the board. 
there's only one. So it would have been a draw if that bomb had not been primed. Because they have to actually be primed. And there was another one somewhere. But yeah, that is to sink a city, the first scenario from Gotham City Chronicles. And that was very fun. It's a very fun game and it was massively close. And the energy management is a lot tougher than, pardon me, than I thought it would be. So what we're probably going to do is this will get posted. If you're familiar with the game, by all means point out anything that was done incorrectly to help go forwards. The game uses a lot of iconography, as is obvious. So things are very easily missed. You know what we probably will do though? We'll do this scenario again, see how it plays out differently, but we'll swap out Rebirth Batman in case Season 2 characters are a bit OP, and we'll put in one of the choices you're supposed to use from the scenario in slot 1, which is either just the base Batman or Agent Montoya. We'll use the base Batman, see how that compares. Don't really want to swap in anyone else. Actually, you know what? We could have Nightwing instead of Red Hood. Yeah, we might do that as well. Just to see how the mission plays out differently. It's not about the supervillains as much as I thought it would be. You really want to keep activating thugs. Bane didn't really do much. He didn't even get to infuse himself with Venom. But we'll see how things play out differently in the future. So please do show your support. There will be a lot of Gotham City Chronicles to come pending miniatures being painted. There's a lot of henchmen on the bench waiting to, to come out. And there's a bunch of maps. There's four maps in the base game and a bunch in the expansions. And a lot of fun scenarios that are, are difficult. So please do show your support. Thank you very much for watching this and giving it a chance. Please do subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And on that note, to that for now.